Hey guys, we're uh, Jay and Jen. This is the cabin that we built, uh, off-grid cabin that we built the last uh, year and a half, right? Yep, completely on our own. Yep. Uh, we just wanted to uh, say welcome to any of you guys if you're new here, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. We're going to tell you how much we have invested into this cabin and this off-grid property in general. We're going to be real open with all the costs of everything for you guys. Uh, and let you know what it's going to cost if you are willing to work hard and try to uh, be cost savvy with your building of an off-grid cabin. Our off-grid property consists of 15 acres. We are located in northern Michigan. Uh, here at Off-Grid with Jay and Jen, we're super budget friendly, DIY. The off-grid property was purchased in stages to help with the cost of things. We didn't have a large sum of money to put down towards a off-grid property, so we had to buy it in stages. Our 15 acres was not purchased all at once. It was purchased at a five acre parcel increments. The five acres that the camp is on was the first piece of property we owned. We owned that for a year. Last year, we bought this five acre parcel where we put the cabin. And then this year, we were fortunate enough to acquire the five acre parcel on the other side of us. So that's how it added up to 15 acres. That's how we were able to afford the 15 acres and uh, we're off grid so the property is a little more affordable when you're not close to utilities and have easy access and maintain roads and stuff like that so we'll go down to the other parcel show you that where camp's at and give you a run through on that so let's go all right i'm just gonna read off the list because why sit here and struggle so i did a real quick budget video on the cabin last fall uh, explaining the exact cost of every process of the cabin um, if you want a little more details on the exact cost of like say the floor subflooring the framing the roofing the windows this and that uh, go watch here. we'll put a link yeah we'll put a link right into that video so you can link. watch how we got to this number that I'm gonna give you right now so at last last fall at that point we had seventy three hundred dollars into this build or six thousand for the building itself and all the structural stuff and then thirteen hundred for the wood stove and the pipe i didn't cheap out on that i don't think that's a good place to cheap out since then we've done we have bought flooring we have a 400 square foot main floor plus 150 um, square foot loft so we used engineered hardwood flooring. Uh, the install, we installed it all ourselves. We have a video on that too. That was a uh, 1350, but we had too much, so we took $250 of it back. So grand total, $1,100 for the engineered hardwood flooring for the cabin. So that adds $1,100 to the cabin build. And then we have $500 in furniture. Yep. A whole place is furnished for 500 bucks. Uh, we don't have the kitchen done yet, guys, so if you're new here, we still have to include the kitchen. Uh, that's what we plan to do this winter, is uh, do some trim work inside, finish off some of the little things, and build a kitchen, uh, for sure. So now cabin cost is $9,000. Yep, we have $9,000 into this off-grid cabin. If you're new here, we are budget conscious and debt free we repurpose a lot of yeah. stuff guys we also made all of our own lumber or we bought a sawmill last year we're going to go down and show you that too all the siding on the cabin was live edge siding from trees from our property that i milled myself the deck that we built here all we have into this deck is asphalt paint for the post we did hard maple posts into the ground all the lumber was made so all we have is hardware which was screws joist hangers um some lag bolts and this whole deck system cost us less than 200 250 dollars yeah. uh, we had we repurposed old nails and stuff that we had buckets of nails that were saved for us we got the whole deck here it goes all the way around yeah so yeah, this deck comes eight foot out and it's 24 foot long along the cabin here. Comes out to this corner. We built a set of steps here on this corner to get down into the yard. And it goes all the way around here, front of the cabin. The view side, 
So you can check out the nice view, sit here in the morning, enjoy your coffee, and check out the view. So just to show you real quick, one of our videos is doing okay. It's a uh, wood stove install. I did a uh, wood stove chimney through the wall kit. That video is getting quite a bit of traffic the last year uh, where I show briefly how to install and how I installed this uh, wall thimble kit. Uh, this is what I was telling you. I didn't cheap out. The through the wall chimney kit came with the cap, it came with the T, all the stuff to come out through the wall, the supports, stuff like that. And then you had to buy the uh, three foot chunks of triple wall chimney pipe uh, individually to how much you need. So I had $800 into that stuff uh, to install this chimney kit. And the uh, wood stove we installed inside, we bought uh, second hand for 500. So that was, like I said, $1,300 of the budget there. Now we'll move on to the solar, guys. All right, guys, we have 10 solar panels. They are 100 watts by Renergy, and they power our cabin. We don't have lots of high need for electricity in our cabin. We are pretty simple, so this is more than efficient for us. They cost about $100 each, so you've got $1,000 in solar panels right here. This is what we got, a 1999 Kawasaki Mule uh, 2510. It's a 600cc four-wheel drive, locking diff, high, low, everything you could want in a work utility uh, vehicle. Uh, it has this beautiful bed. I think it's like four foot by five foot, something like that. This thing has high hours. I think it has close to 3,000 hours at just like 20 hours shy of 3,000 hours. So there's a lot of hours. But it was well taken care of, wasn't all rusted up, it was a good vehicle. $2,400 I purchased this vehicle for. Um, everything I shop for, I shop hard for. We could spend four to $5,000 for a vehicle equivalent to this, but I took my time, knew I wanted one, waited for the right price on one, and found it. Don't wait until you need something to buy it, you will pay full retail or too much for it. We per we searched for one of these for six months before we bought this one because this one was priced right two thousand four hundred dollars for a kawasaki mule 1999 22 years old but uh you know fingers crossed knock on wood it's been really good to us and it's been worth its weight in gold uh, let's go over and i'll show you the outhouse all right guys we have an outhouse we just recently built we built this so we have an easier bathroom when we're up at the cabin. We have a bathhouse we're gonna show you later for showers and such, but need this for wintertime bathroom use because we shut down the bathhouse in the winter. And so we have about $150 invested here in the outhouse. We spent $60 on plywood, $60 on two by fours, and about $30 on miscellaneous stuff such as latches and screws and all that so we have a hundred and fifty dollars invested into our outhouse easy simple okay guys let's uh All right, guys, we're gonna head down to camp and pick up some rafter logs for the woodshed solar array building that we're doing. Uh, let's head down to camp. We'll show you all the stuff we've done over there and give you a breakdown of the cost, okay? Let's go. All right, guys, over here to my left, we have a food plot. We're not gonna trample all over it and stuff because it is deer hunting season, but we cleared the land. We planted a bunch of different seeds for the deer, different food, clover, rye grass, and radishes and such. And we also have a mini orchard here with about 15 trees, apple trees. We got about a 40 yard circle here right now. We're gonna expand it next year too, so that's our plan. But between the seed we planted for the food plot and the trees, we have about $500. 
All right, guys, when we first purchased this off-grid property, we had zero experience with tractors, heavy equipment, um, or anything like that. This property was fully wooded. Um, there was a couple of old trail, a couple old two tracks that we had to clear out. We actually had to spend the first three weekends here just, prune, just pruning all the trees up on the road so we could actually get back here. So a lot's happened in the last three years, but where I was going with that is this was the first tractor that I had ever driven, ever purchased, had any experience with. This is a 1948 Ford 8N. I bought this tractor because it was a very simple, very common tractor, so uh, I knew that I could find information on it, and I was hoping it'd be a pretty good tractor to us. But I just used this with the blade, and I would drag all the camp where we cut the trees down for the camp, and when we did the food plot, uh, we used the blade to drag all the stuff out of there, too. This 1948 uh, Ford 8N originally cost us $1,100. $1,100, 1948 Ford 8N. She's not the prettiest, but she's a workhorse. So there you go. So we got our money's worth out of it, just dragging the roads and grading and stuff like that. Nothing we did here was perfect or professional, but uh, it was a huge help to have a tractor like this around the property when moving logs, moving stuff, grading stuff, stuff like that. So. Uh, so let's go over to camp here, and if we're going to grab a few logs here to uh, use for the roof of the uh, solar array slash woodshed. And then we're going to go over to camp and we'll give you some more breakdown of the cost here at the off-grid property. Alright guys, <laughs> uh, up at the cabin I explained to you that we purchased uh, different parcels at different times to help with the budget. Uh, it wasn't set in stone, but it worked out well. So this is the most recent five acre parcel that we purchased. We noticed over the three years of being here that nobody was ever at this parcel. So we dug into finding the person's information online and contacted them and they were happy to sell it to us. Uh, not only did we get it for, get it, but we got it for a great price. Um, this five acre parcel cost us $7,000 uh, for five acres. So that brings an average what per acre what thirteen fourteen hundred dollars i think i don't know i have to do the math for you real so, quick <laughs> so anyway on top of it being exciting that we have more space and more acreage um it's great because the camp is in a valley the cabin is on top of a giant hill <laughs> and this parcel is flat so it gives us a good variety of terrain and gives us lots of options for the next 20, 30, 40 years if we decide to um, develop other parts of the property uh, or do like a full-time home down here maybe. Maybe the law, maybe the uh, tiny cabin, the off-grid cabin will be forever. We don't know, but this gives us more space, more privacy, and more options. So let's uh, head back to camp now that we got some of these logs loaded up over here and uh, Let's get going. All right, guys. One of the first things you typically need at an off-grid property is somewhere to store all your tools. And I dare say toys, but mostly tools, uh, stuff so you can uh, develop the off-grid property. Uh, dragging stuff back and forth gets old real quick. So one of the first things we did here at the off-grid property was found a good deal on this shed. This is a 12 by 16 prefabricated vinyl sided shed. A friend of a friend, I uh, was getting it repossessed and I got fortunate enough to purchase it for the uh, remainder of balance. This is a four to $5,000 shed. I think $4,000 shed, give or take. Um, I purchased it for the balance of $1,350. And uh, then we had to pay $600 to have it relocated up here so we have under two thousand dollars into this shed i feel like i got a pretty good deal considering uh i got it for about half prices if i had bought it right off of a um shed lot for 12 by 16 vinyl sided barn doors asphalt roof everything 
included. Um, it's on runners, no foundations, just sitting on uh, stumps that I had put on the ground and leveled it out. Uh, one of the first videos we did was me ramming that old Ford 8N into this hill and trying to level it out so we could get this shed up here. So for $1,950, we got this uh, prefabricated 12 by 16 shed brought to our property, dropped off, and it's been uh, a lifesaver having the space to keep tools and such and keep things dry. That was before we had anything else on on the property. So there you go. Another important thing is shelter. Actually, the most important thing is shelter. <laughs> so when you uh, come to an off-grid property and you start clearing things and making things comfortable you can only do day trips and then you gotta go somewhere and sleep at night uh, you could do the tent thing you could do this you can do that but uh we i kind of started my this youtube channel originally just doing little walk and talks and little projects like developing for the off-grid property we didn't get real serious until we started building the cabin but one of the first kind of serious things we did was Renovate this. Renovate this camper. I was out uh, working downstate, and this was sitting on the side of the road for $600. I kind of double took at it <laughs> when I drove by it, and I thought maybe I missed a digit there. Uh, but it was $600 camper. Uh, it needed tires, so we had to put $400 in tires. That added, brought it up to 1000 and then it had some leaks in the bathroom in the bunk area. Well, I did some developments or some renovating of that area, resealed the roof, recalked the skylights and stuff like that. And by the time all said and done with materials and registration and plates and all that stuff. $1,500. Yep, yep. $1,500 for a safe place to, or a safe dry place to uh, lay your head, cook, um, have like a little temporary bathroom situation mm -hmm. it totally allows you to at least spend long weekends up here and not uh be sleeping you know in a little pop-up tent or something and makes you comfortable uh, everything worked on it the, the stove works the oven works the refrigerator the uh the hot water tank everything works in the camper well if the furnace just broke it's not running right now but <laughs> it ran great for three years and it's just He'll now recently it. yeah we'll figure it out so we don't really use this now for except yep. for cooking purposes until the kitchen yep. is complete yep. so you don't have the kitchen set up in the cabin yet so we've used the camper right now to cook and store the you know food in the refrigerator and stuff so yeah fifteen hundred dollars invested into this camper uh, which we will be selling come next year Spring time yeah next year we'll be get, getting rid of it and i'll be building my four thousand square foot log cabin i told you guys about on one of our lives <laughs> jenny will never see me again she'll just sit up there and read and enjoy the view and i'll be down here skinning logs so, no you gotta build me a bedroom oh yeah i gotta build her a bedroom first and my covered porches and her covered porches so maybe in, maybe in two summers i'll get to build my <laughs> log cabin so all right let's go over to the bathhouse the bathhouse was well, a must have for me when he wanted to start spending weekends and stuff here because I need a place to shower and I don't go to the bathroom in the woods. That's my high maintenance of life. <laughs> a pretty low maintenance, but I don't squat in the woods. <laughs> Guys, if you want to have a happy wife, and you want to do an adventure like this, just build her a bathhouse. Just give her a shower and a toilet and a sink, and it'll be way more doable. <laughs> happy that, wife, happy life. Yeah, she was not <laughs> she was not buying it with, you know, even the outhouse. Like we find she finally gave in for the winter time for the outhouse up at the cabin, but. I need uh, a shower too, though. Yeah, she needs a. You need showers when you're out here cutting wood and getting dirty and sweating and clearing trees and doing stuff. You get dirty and gross, so you need a shower. Uh, it doesn't need to be this exact style. You can do an outdoor shower if you like. You can do whatever you want, but this is our little bathhouse. One of the things we did first on this property was the bathhouse, so Jenny could shower and use a toilet. 
seven hundred and fifty bucks. Six seventy. Six seventy plus a hundred dollars for the tanks, right? So nope, that's it was yeah, yeah. seven seventy. So seven hundred and seventy bucks for this complete uh, building, the solar panels, the pumps, the batteries, all the interior stuff. And like I said, we don't do super fancy interior on stuff because a lot of this stuff is, we're hoping, just temporary. And we just worry about functionality. Functionality is what's most important, right? Yes. Yeah. Because we're going to build up. He's going to build we're, me a nice bathroom. Yeah. Up with the bedroom. Yep. We'll do a nice bathroom in off the side of the cabin when we do the bedroom install. So, sound good? Sounds good. So, guys, this is the original parcel that we purchased. Um, there was nothing but trees here. We just opened up this little area uh, for, a, you know, campsite. And then put the camper here. The road did come up through here. Uh, but it was all so overgrown. It was nuts. We spent weekends and weekends and weekends clearing stuff. So this is the original five acre parcel we purchased. Uh, it goes down this way a few acres or a couple acres and it goes a few acres up, up the hill here. So this parcel's in the valley. The other five acre parcel the cabin's on is all hill, which is crazy. And then the most recent um piece of property which is in the front of the road is the flat park parcel so how much did this parcel cost oh yes you? this parcel was the original one cost us six thousand five hundred dollars so for 15 acres we have twenty one thousand five hundred dollars invested into it which comes to just over fifteen hundred dollars an acre mm -hmm. so so you could buy off-grid land in northern michigan with no utilities and stuff and still accessible, but normally not on a maintained road for $1,500 an acre. Um, the way we kept it, like I said, because we don't make a lot of money, we didn't have 25,000 or 20 to $25,000 laying around. So we were fortunate enough to buy it five acres at a time. And the people were more than happy to sell it to us for uh, a fair, fair deal. Prices. Yeah, and it all worked out good. So each year, if you can buy a couple acres or buy a parcel if you have the money to save up, then uh, that's an awesome, awesome way to do it to help uh, keep it budget friendly. So let's go over. We got two more toys to show you, and then uh, we'll do a wrap up. All right, guys. I showed you the 1948 Ford 8N over there by the food plot orchard, and that was how we originally cleared the land. We uh, tilled up the land a little bit with the blade on the back, or we graded everything, I should say. Um, once I bought my sawmill to mill wood for the cabin and for outbuildings around here, I quickly realized that I needed a bigger tractor because that tractor would not move the logs that I wanted uh, to use for the mill. So it would move some of them, smaller ones, but the big, big boys that we were moving around to mill, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't cutting it. So I put a lookout for the, I'm always looking for stuff, but I put a lookout for a bigger tractor. I went to look for this. I went to look at this tractor. It was on marketplace. Um, the guy had it listed as a Massey Ferguson 235. Well, I got there and it was a Massey Ferguson 255. <laughs> so if you know anything about tractors, this tractor is a huge tractor compared to a 235. It's uh, almost double the size of the Ford 8N and a, a Massey Ferguson of the model that I was trying to go purchase. But this tractor is awesome. Um, it's an old tractor. It's a 1974 Massey Ferguson M, uh, MF 255. It's got the loader on the front, which the Ford doesn't have, which is uh, very important. It's got a back blade on the back. This is a big tractor, and it's a diesel, so it's got a big Perkins diesel. Uh, the cost for this tractor, $3,000. It's a 50-year-old tractor still. It's still not new. Can't afford a $30,000 tractor, guys. I mean, I don't. we don't do payments here. We don't do loans. We don't borrow money. Everything we're doing is out of pocket. So we had to, like I said, the last three years, we've been dumping money, dumping money, but a little at a time. You could get away with older stuff. You do have to 
uh, have a little bit be a little bit mechanically inclined if you're gonna get cheap deals on stuff and use older stuff though so if stuff breaks you can diagnose it and figure it out so a very important tool slash this really isn't a toy this is a tool uh, a tractor three thousand dollars there you go add that to the butt add that to the list so guys another tool that we bought here for the off-grid property slash homestead was this sawmill um, I had wanted one of these for five years, but when you don't have an off-grid property, <laughs> it it's a, it would be a little awkward to put a sawmill in your driveway at, in a neighborhood. <laughs> so soon as the world started to get a little complicated two years ago, we had the clearing here, we had the camper here, we had that stuff set up, but things were getting harder to purchase the, the supply chains were gonna start to get difficult um, and we saw that happening so I put the order in for the Frontier sawmill the OS 27 as soon as I could luckily I did that when I did it because shortly after the weights went to months months and months for sawmills so we got this thing we ordered it we had it within two to three weeks because we ordered at the right time I don't traditionally do this, but Jenny set me up with a credit card where we had 0% interest for 12 months. So we purchased it on that, plus we got, what, 5% back or something mm -hmm. like that? Yeah. Uh, so we got 5% back. So I paid this off over, you know, a 6 to 10 month period or a 12 month period. Zero financing, cut, no nothing. Plus we got $250 back on it. The cost of the mill on its own was $3,300, okay, it was $3,299 for the sawmill, the head, and the track. I did end up spending another $1,000 on a track extension. Um, I got a few extra tools to level the logs correctly. I got an automatic waterer, and I bought a five-pack extra blades. I bought... Um, a $300 repair kit like maintenance kit and emergent you know with bearings and belts and all that stuff so all said and done into the sawmill we have four thousand four hundred dollars all said and done we have four thousand four hundred dollars into this sawmill I could cut without the extension you could cut I believe an 11 foot 9 inch board something like that with the extension I can cut a full 16 inch or full 16 foot uh, lumber board with this this was sitting here for the time being we had best intentions to move it and build a platform for it for the last year we haven't gotten to it yet so it is not in a perfect situation right now that'll be the first thing we probably do in the spring is build a foundation for this and get it on flatter ground and a more permanent situation we got this mill in late June of 2020 took us about uh, a month to build Took us about a month to put it together. We kind of picked at it here and there. And it, it's quite a process to get it together, guys. The head comes all assembled. But you got to put all the rails together and all the foot pieces. There's, I don't know, hundreds of bolts. And, and you, we, we did have to assemble quite a bit of stuff on there, mm -hmm. didn't we? And we were working on this while other projects. So yeah, we worked we on this and yeah. other projects. Yeah, we were doing lots of other projects. We were working on the cabin. So uh, we would just kind of peck at this as we went. Um, we used dimensional lumber for the framing and all that on the cabin, but we used this to make all the live edge siding for all the outbuildings and the cabin that you see and all the maple trim that you see on our cabin. So we've already well over saved our money or got our money back out of this mill. If you have the lumber to make stuff with or the trees to make lumber out of, uh, it's kind of a no brainer. Anyway, $4,400 into this sawmill. Uh, that's obviously comes, that's included shipping. That included everything. Like I said, I got a bunch of extra stuff with it uh, to have it. So if we have any issues with it down the road, we're ready to go. So you could get away with cheaper. You could spend less money. But when I do something, I like to be prepared, get extra, get the best of the best, and be prepared for if we have issues. So having a couple extra little things, extra blades, uh, maintenance kit, stuff like that's worth ha having in my opinion. So we're gonna go up to the cabin. We'll add up all the numbers and give you every penny pretty much that we invested into this property over the last three years. 
Hey guys, we uh, lost the audio here on this segment of the videos that we made for you, so I'm just going to do a quick voiceover and let you know that these AGM Renogy 12 volt batteries were $150 a piece. Uh, we have eight of them, so we have about $1,200 worth of batteries there. Also to the left there is the Gain Dell 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. That was a $425 purchase. And then above us here to the right is a EP Ever, EPver uh, charge controller, 40 amp. Uh, that comes with the MT50 top side that you're seeing right there. Uh, that charge controller with the top side was $210. Uh, if you add all the electrical crimps, electrical wire, fuses, and circuit breakers, our whole solar system added up to be $3,185. That's including the 1,000 watts of Renogy panels that you see there behind me. Ah, all right, guys. So grand total, once you add up all the things we have just shown you, is $50,655. Yep, we spent $50,000 on this off-grid property and on this off-grid journey. And all the buildings and everything, everything we've done. Now, $50,000 is a lot of money for us, um, but we spread it out over three years, and we saved up money prior to that this last three years, too. So, really, it's about five years' worth of money we've spent on the off-grid property, and that includes the property itself. We have 15 acres, uh, average of $1,500 per acre, so that's a large chunk of it. The cabin's not even, the cabin is less than 10,000. It's not a giant cabin. It is 16 by 24 with a loft. If you guys are looking to do an off-grid journey or purchase property or build something, you, you know, don't expect it all to happen overnight. It's going to take a long time. You're going to have to save up for it. We're in our late 30s, so uh, we had to get our lives situated downstate prior to doing this adventure, and that took a long time. But we're finally in a situation where we could do it, and we saved up money for years to do stuff like this. So don't wait until, if you say if you want to go in five years, don't wait five years to start doing it. Just start, start collecting stuff now and start saving money and... Uh, you know, get a few things here and there, look for good deals, and make it work. Thank um, you for joining us for our budget of our off-grid property video. We really appreciate yeah. you watching with us. And if you are new to the channel and you are not yet subscribed, make sure you do it because we have lots of cool videos we try to put out. Yep, everything in this video we showed you the cost of, we have a video on and much, much more. We try to put out two videos a week, try to keep you guys entertained, so... Lots of building projects. Yep. So let us know what you think, please, in the comments below. What you think about that budget. Let us know if you would have done stuff differently. You know, don't be shy, guys. So welcome if you're new here and uh, join our journey. And we have a good group of people here. So anything else? Nope. All right. Best wishes, guys. Thank you, and uh, we'll hopefully see you on the new on the next one.